All right, so we're going to talk about the least squares regression line and a formula that we can use to create it. So first of all, the reason why it's called a least squares regression line is because if I take this point and make a square of how far it is away from the line. So see how I just went from the line vertical straight down and kept the length and the width the same and it creates a square. If I create all of the squares of all of these points that are around the line, then you add up those areas of all the squares and the one that is the least square is the LSRL. So out of all mathematically possible lines you could possibly imagine, right? If I drew a line that's coming down diagonally like this, then some of these squares would be huge, right? So you can imagine some really bad lines, but both of these are pretty good. This one goes through the middle points really well, but it misses kind of the end ones. This one goes through the cloud of points and just sort of stays in the middle always. It's a little bit below, sometimes a little bit above. Which of these do you think has a, a smaller sum of the squares? The top one or the bottom one? Well, here's all of the squares done out. And if you look, this one has a few big ones at either end, but this one is relatively small all the time and has a smaller sum of the squares. And this is actually the least squares regression line because if I added the area of all of these green squares, you cannot draw a better line that would have a smaller sum of all of these squares. The least squares isn't just a really good small sum, it is the least squares regression line okay and this is vertically from the line there are there is another version of a least squares regression line which measures perpendicular to the line and squares that okay but that would be significantly harder because it's easier just to line up your x and find out how far you are from the line but that's a different story now the other thing so least squares regression line big squares causes a big sum lots of small medium squares minimizes your sum least squares regression line um, we can create a least squares regression line if all that we know are the mean and the standard deviations and the correlation coefficient, all right? The first thing that I do um, when I wanna do this is I create the equation for my slope, okay? So the first thing I do is create the slope. The second thing, it always goes through X bar, Y bar. So if you look back here, right, the mean of my X's might be right here. Um, and the mean of my y's might be right there. That's, it's always going to go through x bar, y bar when you draw the least squares regression line, okay? And the slope is r times standard deviation of y over standard deviation of x. And so this is like the rise over the run, okay? Standard deviation of y is the average distance of the mean of y, and standard deviation of x is like the average distance of the mean of x. And then this r sort of adjusts for how how like perfectly it fits this line or not, okay? And so it's able to adjust it a bit depending on how strong the correlation is, okay? Um, so once you have that, then you can use that to solve and find your y-intercept, and you're in good shape. And you can write your equation. All right. So these are um, a statistics professor. They wanted to use your pre exam average, which everyone knows, in order to predict your final exam score. That's what we're trying to predict. All right. And so Karen wants to predict her final exam based on this information. She got an 82 was her pre exam average. Can we use that to predict her final exam score? So the first thing we do is we want to create a B, which is R times standard deviation of Y over standard deviation of X, which would be 0 0.7, 12 over eight, which comes to um, 1.05, all right? And now we can plug in um, Y equals a plus bx, and I'm gonna plug in my x bar and y bar, so my means. So my y bar is 78, a plus um, 1.05 times 75, and this comes out to 78.75, so if I subtract that on both sides, um, we're left with negative 0.75. So I can write my final um, least square regression line, I wanna put it in context, so the exam is predicted to be negative 0.75 plus 1.05 times my average, my pre-exam average, all right? And we can use that with her pre-exam average of 82, and we can predict Karen's exam 
score is predicted to be negative 0.75 plus 1.05 times 82. And we get 85.35 is her predicted exam score. Okay. Um, so that is how to create a least squares regression line and do some good stuff with it. Good luck and farewell.